Hey boys and girls, it's Miss Madison. I have more fun art projects for you to do at home. Sorry if you hear some noise. I have my noisy air conditioner running in the background because it is very hot in my upstairs studio. But okay, so today we are going to learn about pointillism. So pointillism is when you take a picture and instead of painting it with strokes or coloring it in with crayons, you're going to create the picture out of itty bitty little dots. So, what I mean by that is something kind of like this. Now, I haven't finished this yet because I won't lie, this kind of project takes a lot of time, but it's very easy to do and it'll keep you busy for a while if you're looking for something to do on a day that you're bored. So, this project is also good for all ages because you can make it as complex or simple as you want. You can see that I've experimented with a little bit of shading on mine. But remember, you're doing it all with itty bitty little dots, okay? Or you could do it with slightly bigger dots. You get to decide because you're the artist. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about pointillism and then I'll explain further how we do this project. So pointillism was started by two different artists named Georges-Pierre Seurat and Paul Signac. Now, these two worked together during the late 1800s, early 1900s, and the post-impressionist era, there's a big art history word for my older kids, to create the style known as pointillism, which, as I just explained, is creating a picture out of itty bitty little points. So, these, the, for this project, you will need paper, pencil, eraser, and some markers for the colors that you're gonna want. I have a lot of markers because I was playing around with the shading, like I said, so I have like a couple different yellows and oranges. I'm using the Crayola Super Tips. I got a box of 50 of these for like seven bucks at Walmart in the school supply section. So, but you can use whatever kind of markers you have. You can use colored pencils if you want. Um, you could even try this with crayons if you want. You can use whatever you've got or paint. Um, so I worked on first drawing out my sunflowers with pencil so that I have a nice setup to follow here. And then I started adding my dots. Now you're gonna wanna draw your pencil nice and light so that it doesn't show up through your dots, especially because you're gonna be using a lighter color like yellow for the petals. And then all you would do from there is, I liked to start with my lightest color first. So for my pe petals, I picked my lightest yellow. And I liked to work around the outside of my flower petal first. So where I put my pencil lines is where I always start making my dots. And I do like to leave a little bit of space between mine. So it's probably kind of hard to see, but I made my dots right along this pencil line here. And then I'm going to keep on adding my dots all down my flower petal. I wish I had a good way that I could hold this up and dot it at the same time for you guys, but I think you get the point. And then when I get that done, I would just do another row. I like to follow the lines that I drew. So like for my second row, I'm still working up this line and you can see where it looks a little thicker now, right? That's because I've added another row of dots. Or, if you want, you can make your dots like this and fill it in like you would color, like that. You can make it diagonal, you could do it in swirl patterns, you can do this however you want. And that's kind of the fun of it, is that however you decide to lay down your dots will change the way that your picture comes out a little bit. So, once you add those all in there, you're going to start adding your different shading. So, what I mean by this is that I'm just going to get an area of um, yellow built up here. So, in this corner, I have some yellow laid down. Now, I want that to match this flower. So, I'm going to take my next darkest color, which is this yellow. I know it doesn't look much different, but they are. 
and I'm going to start laying that one down so that it gradually starts to make my picture have some more depth. This is what makes it look a little bit more detailed, a little bit more 3D, and you can see where I've added my darker color in that corner there. And I would keep building up however much I want to until my whole picture is filled. You can see I did green for the stem and I'll do green for my leaves. I did some browns and I added a little bit of black to the inside here, the middle of the sunflower. And then I'm doing my yellows and a little bit of oranges on the outside too. But sunflowers come in lots of different colors. So if you wanted to make red sunflowers or orange sunflowers or even like burgundy or black sunflowers, you could do that too. So let your creativity run wild and enjoy the last little bit of summer that we've got going on here. And if you get the chance, go out and pick some sunflowers. Bye guys. Thanks.